You're watching RSA 2023 coverage. I'm Aubrey with Dev Central, and I'm joined today by John Ray with Talus. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. It's like a, a been a, a whirlwind of a week already, and and so attended the conference this year. Yeah, it's always exciting. Lots of people here. Lots of new stuff going on. It's uh, interesting to see. Now, this is this is my first RSA conference. This I'm. Have you you've been to a few? I've been to a few. Yes, yes. But fair so number over the past ten years. <laughs> so just for my own edification, uh, attendance wise, how is this versus uh, ones that you've been to in the past? Just packed or I think there's more people here this year than I've seen in a long time yeah I mean definitely a dip with the pandemic and not happening and then last year there was good attendance but this year it's really picked up yeah well that's that that's interesting I mean for me having this as a first impression it, it, it's wild it's absolutely wild now with uh, Talos we've been partners for quite some time um, it's been at least a decade I think um, so our, uh, our our customers, I think a lot of our community members know about the solution, but just in case, for those that don't know, um, fill the community in on what Talos does. Okay, well, Talos does a lot of things. We're a pretty large company, everything from trains and in-flight entertainment systems to some military stuff, but uh, our area is focused on digital security. So we have a number of project products that help out with uh, encryption or uh, identity, and uh, uh, protecting keys. And just in case we've got federal customers, do you guys manage FIPS stuff as well? Absolutely, <laughs> our products are FIPS certified. It's a main requirement in our industry. Yeah, you, you kind of have to to do business with certain people, it seems yes. like. We, we do the same. Yes. Um, now, uh, so our, our, our partnership has been largely built around the, the HSM. Can you talk to us a little bit about what advancements or what kind of things might be coming up for HSM with Talos soon? Okay, I mean, HSMs in general are used every day by everybody. It's one of those things where you don't see it, but it's involved in everything you do from all the devices you have having identities to securing your financial transactions to even when you're watching streaming services. When you cross a border, an HSM is in the back end having provided an identity and verified those identities. So it's everywhere, which is quite interesting when you see that. Well, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's something that I know a bunch of my customers through time have uh, have worked with, and it's, uh, it, it's absolutely imperative. Now, network HSMs uh, are one thing, and that's something that we found in the data centers quite often. Where is uh, HSM going in the future? Services, is that kind of where you guys are at this point? Yeah, so we, what we like to say is we have a flexible offering depending on what a customer is trying to do. So we have our traditional HSMs, which you would install in your own data center, protect your applications, but we also have a cloud service where our HSMs are available in a different billing model, but same capabilities, same certifications, same use cases like PKI and protecting uh, TLS traffic and uh, issuing identities. So you have your options and you can move between them. Fantastic. I guess then how will uh, post-quantum compute impact what you guys do? Yeah, so quantum computers and their capabilities are going to be able to break crypto as we know it today. So it's a real trigger point that people are going to have to think about. Nobody knows exactly when the quantum computer is going to be available to do stuff like this, but you have to prepare now. There's the concept of harvest and decrypt, where somebody can save data today, harvest that data today, and in the future, when there's a quantum computer, it will be able to decrypt that data and look at it. So companies are going to have to think about uh, now, figuring out how to protect their data that needs to be kept secret for a long period of time. Okay. Now, I am assuming that if we're talking about cracking keys with post-quantum or with quantum computers, rather, um, then I'm assuming that we're also looking at having quantum compute assist in defending. Is that a safe assessment? Uh, not right now. It's you're really using the classical computers with new algorithms, which are able to protect against the threat of quantum computers and the math that they can do. It'll be interesting to see once there are quantum computers, how they can help protect things. I, I had wondered if perhaps maybe it could help speed up the transactions for FIPS or <laughs> transactions per <for laughs> second. 
because that, that's my hope as a, as a technologist that we can do something to improve that performance. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the power of the quantum computer computers is really around being able to solve complex math problems, which is crypto is based on today. So it's going to help uh, a lot of things uh, in uh, medicine and, and I guess pre predictive analysis. But when it comes down to uh, being able to help protect against um, uh, threats, uh, it will be interesting to see. Agreed. And uh, I guess that's, that's what I've got for you today, John. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate the time today. All right. Thank you. And thank you, community, for tuning in to DevCentral's coverage of RSA 2023. I'm Aubrey. Have a great F5 day.